We're with a partner and investment manager at Cheviot Asset Management, David Miller. Thank you so much for joining us. How would you actually play the markets in this very tough environment? Well, there's no getting away from the fact that these are momentous times, and you'd expect the markets to be a bit more concerned than they actually are. And I think that's because what's going on, and putting it in context, is that in the rest of the world, there's really some quite good news. Mm -hmm. U.S. economic numbers are good. Uh, we're hearing more from them on a regular basis now. Um, in the Far East and emerging economies, the move to tighten is starting uh, to ease off. And so it's something that, of course, it gives us hope, at least for the future. But I know a lot of investors are either risk on or risk off because there are two very clear scenarios. Dave, give me a little bit of a flavor of what stocks you like. Because I know you've been looking at two in particular, and one of them is in the healthcare industry, GlaxoSmithKline. Yes. Well, this is a, I mean, it's a great company, but it's been an awful investment for nearly 10 years now. Um, it was a darling of the stock market, a gross stock, big multiple, and yet the last 10 years derating back to what I think is now a very reasonable level. And the fact is the company is turning itself from a growth company that isn't growing into a utility that's determined to return value to shareholders. It's starting to cut back on R&D and starting to focus on cash generation. And it's got great products that it can sell around the world. So you're basically looking for the dividend. Is that, is that you're in search of the dividend? Well, I think 5% doesn't hurt in an environment like this. Um, but I think on top of that, um, that actual uh, value, that ability to generate income is going to become more valuable to investors and we could see a re-rating on the back of that, mm -hmm. not just on the back of decent earnings. Now the other stock that you're looking at quite intensely is Compass Group and this of course it has all to do with outsourcing so I imagine that in this kind of environment it's the outsourcing companies that will benefit from any kind of growth. Any, anyone who can come to a company in this environment and say we can save you money is going to get a fair hearing and I think Compass is doing a very good job of that. Results are tomorrow, uh, so we will see. Uh, markets are obviously nervous about, about companies ahead of their results but we're expecting decent results, possibility of a share buyback, you've got a strong management team that's been in place for several years, um, good balance sheet, I think there's a lot to be said for a company like this, yield around three and a half percent at this level. But David, of course, all of these results are lagging really the crunch time of the European debt crisis and also all the uncertainty in the U.S. So even if we have good earnings tomorrow, it'll be what next quarter brings that, that is somewhat more worrying. Yes, I mean, statements and forecasts are clearly important. Um, but I think, as I said, the evidence from the U.S. is that the, the leading indicators are turning more positive. Of course, the, the political wrangling is going to continue for some time to come. I expect until next November. We're just going to have to learn to live with that. But the less help that the government in the US, the politicians are able to give, the more help we should expect to get from the Fed. This is, this is generally good news. Markets are concerned that they might be, essentially, there might be intervention. And that's why they're not, as, not any weaker than they are.